come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to take over the world and cyberspace. Cyber Christ? Yeah. As Cyber Christ. We are all, are we Cyber Christ? How do you pluralize that? Cry. Cyber Cyber Cry? We are Cyber Cry. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't think that's right. Has has anyone tried to pluralize Christ? Uh, (laughs) Many people. I was going to say, I feel like it's. It's been tried. <laughs> well, these are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Stephen King's The Lawnmower okay. Man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we watched The Lawnmower Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I almost got sued there for a second, so I had to go back. Take his name off. Law of Mormon. From the year. 1992, I believe. 1992. 92? Mm-hmm. Who directed The Law Mower Man? A man named Brett Leonard. Do we know Brett Leonard? We know Brett Leonard. Uh, we've brought uh, at least one movie. <laughs> one movie of his before, Virtuosity. Which That's was right. Done in Very similar vibe. Which yeah, we, right. we figured out a... Partway through this movie, Michaela yeah. and I had that realization. Yeah, the exact same yeah. I, yes. put it, I put it to Holly and Michaela. I'm like, we've done other, one other movie from this director. I'll let you guess who. Yeah. Was... And as the computer graphics started showing up, <laughs> yes. I, think, I think you guys yeah. got the sense. I was like, wait. <laughs> well, it, it's just oddly. Familiar. It's like they're, these movie. Those movies are two sides of the same coin because it's one are. evil guy coming out of the internet and one evil guy going in the internet. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's true. It's it's, it's, true. it's really feature. the perfect double feature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. It really uh, is. They yeah. weren't so fucking long. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what had he done? Something edit, before? my dude. Edit. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had done. Uh, he had also done that movie Hideaway with now, Jeff Goldblum. I I haven't seen it. I've owned that book forever, and I haven't. Um, I haven't ever read it. It's by Dean Koontz. Yeah, the, the Alicia por- Silverstone. Oh, okay. it, yeah. uh, maybe it sounds more familiar. Uh, the some would say the poor man's Stephen King. Yeah, but he has, uh, I guess, experience. You know, working on these things that are adapted from. Well, what had he done prior to the Lawnmower Man? He had done all right. So uh, a few things. The Dead Pit. I've never oh, heard of this shit. from 1989. Wait, did we, we didn't watch The Dead Pit? No. Here? I, I don't think so. so. I don't think so. Okay. What is The Dead Pit? It's one of those like uh, really bad, it's like a slasher movie. It takes place in an asylum, I think. That, or there's a, yeah, because there's like a dead pit. It glows green. I remember like in the basement. You, you're like, the, you know, you know a dead pit. <laughs> no, you have to describe no. what a dead pit is. One of those dead pits. <laughs> oh, cool. Poster's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's I've a really seen cool this. Poster. I thought we yeah. watched that no, the, movie. No, I've the seen funny it. Thing is, the funny thing is, is this has been on my list, but it's one of those that I'm like, what is this and why is it on my list? I yeah, never know you don't what remember. it is, yeah. but it's been there forever. I a doctor that's been like transformed, yeah. wandering around through the halls. Of Cheryl the- Lawson. It's uh, uh, Cheryl Lawson stars as a mental patient who must defeat an undead serial killer who previously worked at the asylum. No. The Dead Pit. Huh. Drop in any time. So oh, yeah. oh, I All like right. it. I like it. But that's not what we watched tonight. No. What year was that? <laughs> that was 89, and okay. then he directed okay. The Lawnmower Man. Okay. And then in 95, he did both Hideaway and Virtuosity. Okay. In 98, he did T-Rex, T-Rex Back to the Cretaceous, which God only knows what that is. That's I'm a great title. And see what the post. Well, I'm interested. That's yeah, a I was great like, title. Oh, I'm oh look this okay. Up. So yeah. like actual T Rex. So he back went from virtuosity back and hideaway back to the video store. He right. <laughs> he also yep. okay. So he did Man Thing in 2005. Oh no. And Feed uh, in 2007. Highlander the the Source. Oh nice. So he did a Highlander movie. Yeah. Um, Man Thing is the Marvel Swamp Thing. I'll have you know. R- oh okay. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. that makes sense. <laughs> and then uh, a couple other things that aren't really Man worth Man Thing mentioning. is a terrible title. Man he was thing. in Werewolf by Night, the Marvel. Mm-hmm. Man at the, yeah, <laughs> yep. up. I still yep. haven't watched that. Yeah, it's decent. Um, okay, so I guess like uh, any conversation about the Walmart man has to start with Stephen King. What was the Truly. okay? So fill us in. What's the story there? A 1975 short story by Stephen King called The Lawnmower Man, which uh, I was talking to Colin earlier. is about 15 pages long, you said. I don't know if it's even that. It's even that. It's part of the night shift story collection. There you Mm -hmm. go. From what I gather from it, it's about uh, uh, someone observes a a mystic mowing the lawn one day uh, who is controlling the lawnmower with his mind. But he's also stripping naked and eating the lawnmower clippings. Right. That's what I remember. Yep. He's chasing around behind the thing. It's like he hires a, a it's a guy hires a lawn landscaping mm. company. This guy shows up 
and then crazy shit goes on. Right. He ends up the lawnmower chases the guy, I think, through the house. Yeah. And in the end of it, like he it, I think the idea is the lawnmower man is a satyr. Yeah. And he's a pan worshiper. Yes. And he does he ends up killing the guy and puts he puts his remains in like a bird bath. In the bird bath. Like a, yeah, and that's the end of the story. Yeah. Oh, so okay, all right. So big so red, the lawnmower chasing <laughs> to the house, and the cop saying his remnants ended up in the bird bath is basically it's- so the rest of this is Brett it. Leonard then. Yeah. <laughs> the rest okay. of this is Brett Leonard. <laughs> yes. Because that's where all the tech comes in. That that is distinctly yes. Brett Leonard yes. from my they, experience. Okay. They yeah. brought yeah, they brought all those elements in and yeah. Mm-hmm. So this was and uh, some other uh, elements from different Stephen King novels, but nothing yeah. like pretty, well, the only pretty, other pretty thing. Pretty deep into Stephen King being totally coked out of his mind. Probably. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, Sounds probably like in 1992. It. Well, he was yeah. just writing everything. I mean, yeah. he just he just writes it, whether it's yeah. good or not, or short or That's half true. form. That's true. And so this is like a. I mean, all the stuff in Night Shift he had published in other like magazines. Right. Back then there were, you know, you could submit a short story to a magazine and get it published in there. So this was, I think, one of those. Mm-hmm. And then they were collected later. He would famously sell the rights to his. Uh, movie or his stories for like a dollar his billion dollar babies yes. or whatever mm-hmm. i don't know if this was part of that sale but somebody bought the rights to the lawnmower man story and then basically just said and hey, we can't really make a movie out of this right. and so let's make this other thing and we'll and call it name stephen king's the lawnmower man now famously this was the same year that stephen king had written an original screenplay for the movies and it was called Sleepwalkers. Sleepwalkers yeah. Yes, previously done on this show. <laughs> yes, yes. monumental <laughs> part of this show. The Lawnmower Man came out, I think, like just shortly before it. I think the mm. uh, subsequent lawsuit by Stephen King was that it had confused the marketplace that people didn't know the difference between like the one he actually wrote. Right. He sued and said, "This doesn't." Uh, resemble the short story very much at all mm-hmm. so I'd like my name taken off of it and it was a battle for a little while there because New Line um, they they advertised with his name I mean then they had to take it off they released a version of this that still had his name on the title when I saw it in the theater it had his it said Stephen King's The Lawnmower mm-hmm. and you can still hear the sound effect of his of name coming, coming <laughs> in over That's the great. title yeah. and so they had to take that off then it went to home video and laser disc and it's a couple of them still came out with his name on it so he had to get those taken off he got a lot of uh, like damages from this just based on like uh, it's still got my name on it Please take it off. New Line was just like, no, we must have Stephen King's name on it. Otherwise, no one will see this movie. Ironically, though, a shitload of people saw this movie. Yeah, I remember good. this being like a, uh, you know, it was a hit. Yeah. $10 million budget, box office, $150 million. Damn, okay. Yeah. That's a huge hit. In 1992, hit. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. lot of money. I remember yeah. seeing it in a packed movie theater. Damn. Um, what was the crowd's reaction? So here's the, I, I think that, you know... I remember, um, you know, people talking about um, 2001 when it came out, right? It was a movie that, like, all the acid heads went and saw, uh, you know, while, while <laughs> they were was tripping. In that line. And I think Lawnmower Man was, like, the movie that you would go to, uh, you know, on, on some kind of substance. I can imagine, with just with the, <laughs> the, the CGI and the graphics in this movie, like, you trip harder than Jeff Fahey in this movie. Yeah, because I don't think, you know, people weren't really... Uh, they hadn't seen anything like it before. Mm. I mean, that's why it's hard. Like tonight, watching it, you're just like, "Oh my god, this is like uh, you know, terrible CG." But nobody had seen really that yeah. before. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you think of like your CG movies. It was Tron or something. Everything looked very angular. Yes, and this was a kaleidoscope of like abstract. You know, uh, you know, just you you had not seen anything like that before. Right. I think, and that was the big draw. There was a. Do you guys remember this? So I'm going back to the video store days. I used to work in a video store and there was this series of tapes that came out. And I think they were released by BMG, the music company, and they were called The Mind's Eye. I do familiar? remember this. Okay. <laughs> Sounds familiar. So they were basically abstract computer animations mm-hmm. that yeah. like didn't make any goddamn sense yep. or whatever, but they were set to music mm-hmm. by like Jan Hammer. Hammer yeah. you know? It was like the first yeah. version of Windows Media Player, yeah. but yeah. like on tape. Yes. Yeah, exactly. 
Why? <laughs> because it, we, like, you didn't have like we the didn't... music channel back then yet. So yeah. this is how you ah, did it. Yeah, yeah. So. I forgot about the music they channel. They rented yeah. out all the time. There's like yeah. four of them, I think, like series that background came Background for a party. Yeah. Uh-huh. You just okay. throw them in okay. in the background or whatever, mm-hmm. sit and uh, veg out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get stoned the... and watch them. That sounds like fun. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, I think one of those... And now my my memory may be betraying me, but I think like some of the sequences from the Lawnmower Man ended up in in. Oh, in you got to reuse tapes. that. It's I too expensive to make. Right, yeah. you can license that out, make mm-hmm. some more money off of it. Yeah. Mm. So we have our uh, so virtual reality is the uh, story for the word for tonight. Yes. Now mm-hmm. it's going to change the world. We're told at the beginning of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's One day, expand the human mind. Yeah, it's going to be a big thing. Uh, so basically, still waiting for it. Still waiting for it. I mean, some version of it, you know. Is Zuckerberg the biggest proponent of uh, the metaverse? I mean, no one else wants it as bad as he does. I can <laughs> yeah. tell you that. So Right. And, and do people want that version of it? I don't know. I mean, I think there's always going to be a specialized kind of. Yeah. I mean, like the Apple, new, the new Apple computer, you wear it, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but even yeah. that went downhill real quick. Mm-hmm. Did it? Oh yeah. People like uh, the sales kind of tapered off big time. People return their headsets real quick. Yeah. It's not doing. I'm right. trying to like put more distance between myself and the internet, not less. You know what I'm I saying? Want, like yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 do, I can't imagine given the state of the internet as we're recording this in 2024 that I want to be more immersed in it. It's, yeah. That seems like hell. I think these people <laughs> are trying to immerse you in the parts that aren't like toxic where you it's not exactly it an interaction last, with other people you think they'll get in there it, it will i mean they'll look infiltrate. at look at all those studies they've done of like they get they've given like a robot a twitter profile and within like three hours it's racist and like you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. like yeah. like it, it'll get ruined immediately it yeah. won't uh, stay pure i think we have to put a warning up that michaela is uh, slowly reverting to her <laughs> feral bog witch <laughs> form I so think, any sort of I'm technology saying, like this she's just not i'm just saying all we yeah. ever hear about is how bad social media is for you so what are we going to do i'm literally we'll physically immerse ourselves yeah. more in it yeah this it. sounds yeah, no. like a great idea yeah, Could, do you really want to see like your parents boomer memes on facebook in real like space <laughs> in front of you no like no one like wants that into your eyeballs yeah. you yeah. get that what what was it that um the on um, instagram on old, on old tvs where the image would just uh, uh, burn into the screen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you get yeah. that on your yes. eyeballs yeah. of your parents. Yes. And <laughs> Instagram already fucks with my mental health. I'm going to yeah. strap it to my face. Yeah, no. exactly. Right, yeah. No, it's terrible. No, yeah. well, no but ask a, a generation below us how they feel about it because mm-hmm. I think yeah. maybe it's past. Well, I don't know, but there's still, I think, like an aversion to people like putting on, you know, I mean, I think that's why 3D, you know, keeps coming as a fad and, and never Google really Glass catches on. Google Glass failed you spectacularly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and these things are big, giant, he- you know, mm-hmm. goggles that you have to wear yep. and i think there was always the idea at least back in lawnmower man era you know like uh, virtual reality is going to be some kind of like virtual world that you go into and you know they want else. inception yeah it's not like what we actually get which right. is like you yeah. can see a 3d version of a computer in front of you mm-hmm. <laughs> right you know or you could take the glasses off and put a computer in front of you right. you know the- it is basically just taking one step into the computer so just like the the what you see on the computer is just around you yeah, yeah. like that's basically what it is now i i played an oculus uh rift headset once and do you know what the game they had was mm. bar fight simulator <laughs> do you think that's what <laughs> Bust up on like you literally you are pov fighting someone in a bar why do i want to play this this is uh, what this is what you're using to try and sell me on this bar some, fight simulator like some other stuff my kid was playing it today he's got one of them fueling the rage that we I, need to get rid i'm of. just like you know, what was the, the big hit was like uh what was it saber what was that thing called Lights, a beat saber beat saber you know it's fun you, you i've played it shit with the there's yeah. some fun stuff where you can you but know, this is all so rudimentary though that yeah. like oh, much, it's yeah. like the only thing that makes it worthwhile is the virtual reality component you would not play this game on a controller that wasn't VR because it'd be boring as shit. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you're right. Yeah. That's the element that I mean, draws you in. Yeah, that's a gimmick. Like to hold it. Yeah. You, you really get into it and you do the thing they did in this movie. You're like, my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can see my hands. Like, it you do cool. do that. I mean, I've the had, first time you strap into it. Yeah. I mean, I played some VR stuff. I yeah. played Resident Evil 7 in VR. Mm-hmm. And when I think back on that video game, it's a strange thing because you remember like being in that house. Yes. It isn't like mm-hmm. I remember playing the thing on my, you know, on yeah. the TV. I remember right. being there, like, you know, racing simulators. They or also, whatever. well, they did like, they did Skyrim in VR, but like yeah, that yeah. game is 15 years old. Like, it doesn't feel immersive. It feels like I'm watching Skyrim on a bigger TV. You know what I'm saying? Because that yeah. game was, was 
not designed to be a virtual reality game. They just retrofitted it 15 mm-hmm. years later. And it's like, that's not. It does trick your mind though. And I guess it kind of goes into what they're saying in the, in, in the movie. Like, you know, you, you do get that kind of motion sick. I ha- you do. I put it on for the first time mm-hmm. and uh, you're just walking around and you look over a cliff. That's bad. And yeah. you get the, the mm-hmm. vertigo of it. You feel like you're falling. Sometimes you can't even stand up. Like I've mm-hmm. lost my balance in this. Yeah, one yeah, yeah. Now we've reached the point of why I have nothing to say about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get motion sick very easily. Oh yeah. yeah. This is yeah. So I don't do this. I don't yeah. do this. Yeah. It's because the, your, the, your on-screen avatar is maybe moving, you know, but you're sitting you're in a chair, yeah. or standing, and it, yeah, it confuses your brain. That you being said, the hoops wall. they're in in this make it look so much worse. A gyroscope. I don't need to be <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. being flipped around upside down. And th- oh no, that would yeah, make you remember me those? Even worse. Those were like big in the nineties. Well, you like, pay, go to the mall like, and ride them. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, 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 that. Oh yeah, they were. You could pay to ride them at the mall. I know. Wow, that makes it sound ancient. Get in the circle thing and have it shake you around for five minutes. Like, what were we thinking? Why did they have the VR? No, no, it was just in the hoop and you. Just but I remember being around. told that like that's what astronauts go through. Right. Like it's astronaut and then training. Up, like, yeah. You end up on like guts or something. Yeah. Or some competition show, yeah. Yeah. and it turned into some like, can you last? And it's just like I don't know. If <laughs> and sometimes that. they'd go faster over time, and yeah. it was like, oh fuck, that's so nauseating. Yeah. Off. I guess the yeah. current version of that at the mall is the big bungee yeah, jumpers, they, yeah, right? Yeah, that's yeah. their version of that now. Yeah, less Not puking. S- yeah, probably. yeah. I just feel like that humans were so stupid. I know. Why do we do that? Like, <laughs> they do have the VR uh, sit down ones at the malls as well where you sit in there and you put the thing over and you yeah. just kind of ride yeah. it around yeah. simulator yeah. stuff yeah. but yeah. that's not what uh, Dr. Lawrence Angelo is going after in the lawnmower man. Oh no. Larry. He's <laughs> trying to expand the human mind. And how through virtual reality is he uh, like what's the plan here? How does this work? I think work? we should say yeah. uh, who's, who, who's who is Dr. Playing? Larry? Yeah. Who's Dr. Larry? Uh, we have Pierce Brosnan. Yes. Pierce Brosnan. Is he on the wall? Uh, uh, I hope so because we'll, we've done at least one other one which is what was when that I, when one I, I brought? Was, that was, well, that's what I was going to say. Was when so I remember boring. he was in this, I was hoping we weren't oh, going to get... Oh, nomads. Nomads. Yeah, nomads. Nomads. We nomads. We nomads. Get nomads. He was wearing glasses in that one, too, to being a smart was professor. He, he, was a he was a historian. Historian. Yeah. French historian or something yeah. in a French right, accent. We haven't put him on the wall. Yet. Okay, oh, well. Damn. All right. Yeah. Goldeneye yeah. coming According soon. According to... Don't you dare. I will. I like Goldeneye. I'll bring it. That's a freak show movie? Goldeneye? I'm not Dad, saying I'm going to no, talk to her. Bring Gold Knight. Okay. We have Dude, to. I gonna, have why? Like, we we did do a James Bond movie on this show. Um, we did one. We've done a few. Breaker. Yeah. We did a few. We did. Wasn't one. a view to a kill done as well? No. no. Oh. We've only done one. We talked well, about well, it. Well, maybe yeah. I'll bring that one. Moonraker yeah. was the last yeah. one. We've only done Moonraker. Um. So Pierce Brosnan, Star of Remington Steel. Yes. Nomads. Yep. And. Future James Bond, yeah, um, mm-hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that. The, the, yeah. Did you that see the remaking James Mrs. Bond. Doubtfire with Will Smith? Is this real or is this like an is, internet is rumor this, thing? No, I I I think this is real. I don't believe you, and I refuse to believe it because <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire is perfect. But I know, whatever, I agree. Did you see they made a stage play of it though, a musical? I did see. And that. It's playing in Chicago. Is it? I'd go see that. I'd go see it. Mm. Looks pretty fun. So uh, <laughs> pre- before he hit the the, the big, you know, before he was cast in the role he was meant to play, mm. James Bond, right? The lawnmower man. The lawnmower he was man. in that. Uh, who else Jeff is- Fahey is also, he's the titular lawnmower man. Yeah. Jeff Fahey. What do you know him from? He's like a guy this. that I always see as he like was on his way to, <clears throat> you know. Wasn't he on Lost? Yes. He was, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah much later. He I was see- in, other, I remember seeing him Psycho 3. He was in that. Right. And then he was in a movie called Body Parts. He, oh, Body yes. Parts, that's on the list. You, Don't talk too much yeah. more about that. Yeah. Bring, that's been on my list for a while. I, I feel like for a long time he was that guy, if you had a Western property or a sci-fi yeah. property, yeah. he, he was, was showing up. Yeah. Was sh- yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he was showing up as like a supporting character in yeah. both of those wasn't, universes. Wasn't he in a, a, in a wide Earp adaptation? Yes, yes, he was in the yes. Kevin Costner yeah. one, yeah. and yeah. apparently is friends enough with, he's in Horizon, uh, the new Kevin Costner oh, movie. Oh, okay. And I like that he was, he must have buddied up with Robert Rodriguez because he was in a couple of the From Dust Till Dawn TV so, shows. He yes. was in Battle Angel Alita and mm-hmm. he was paired with Michael Bean. I think they were brothers in uh, Planet Terror. Yes. Which I thought so was like, he, the nod back to like his... He is to uh, Robert Rodriguez what like uh, like a Bill Mosley is to Rob Zombie, yes, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was also in Darkman 3, Die, Darkman, Die. Was he oh. Darkman? No, he was the bad guy. Oh, he was the bad guy. Okay. Um... 
So Jeff Ahey's in it. Um, also, Jenny Wright is in this movie. I bring this up because uh, yeah. we saw her, I think, uh, twice before. Oh, and we're putting on the- her on the wall. Oh. If you can Wait, identify. who did she play in this movie? She was the oversexed Southern Belle uh, the, uh, <laughs> ah, who yes. seduces Job. Of course, the yeah. widow. Marnie's oh, in okay, so Marnie. near dark. Yes. And I'm looking, I'm just looking through her shit. I'm Madman. I'm Madman. Oh, oh right. yeah. No wonder she okay. looked familiar. <laughs> She's the blonde with That's the hair. Yes. Right. Right. Okay, I yeah. remember. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, Hi, gotcha. Madman. MF wow. Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Free Show Wall of Fame, did yes, the Lord's work Thank on you. tonight's yeah. movie. I found a whole bunch of people now. Jenny Wright, we're going to say, mm-hmm. Hall, Hall, yes. uh, uh, Wall of Fame. Wall of Fame. Uh, Wall the of hallway, fame. Yeah. though, yeah. is uh, relegated for Michael Gregory, who was... Um, in this, he was a security chief, and you may have recognized him because he was the guy who was trying to negotiate with the hostage taker in RoboCop. Okay. We'll even throw in a blop punk. Right? He's that guy. He was the security okay. chief. And he sure. was also I take your word for it. I believe you. I trust you. Uh, Frank Collison. Yeah, he was on the, the thing, talking to the guy in the building. Okay. I, I, where, why are, where is this perception that we have an encyclopedic knowledge of RoboCop come from? Guys, I remember next to nothing about me RoboCop. Too. Really? Like, no, yes. Wait, same. RoboCop yes. was a seminal film yeah, of the- I, Not for me, it wasn't. It wasn't for me. I remember I mean, everything about know, RoboCop. I don't remember shit. I know. Anytime someone calls a girl, I'm like, yeah, sure. I, I take your word You're for dead. it. You're yeah, dead. No. If we, we killed you. All we have to do is say, I'll buy that for a dollar, and the RoboCop tweet thing will oh, tweet yeah. back at us. <laughs> uh, Frank Colliston was in this. He was a security guard at the gate, but he was also Hobbs, the old guy who got the blob on him oh. in the blob. Uh, oh. And Classic. he was in the village. Blob. Got it on the stick and then yeah. hit his hand in it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Apparently, he was a security guard in this. I couldn't pick him out. Ray oh, Likens yeah. was Harold in this. Okay. Was Harold the victim okay. of the, the lawnmower? Scene, uh, oh, anyway, baby. I don't remember. He was also in Man's Best Friend and Terror Tract. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, Denny Suburban Pierce horror. was a skinhead guard in The Lawnmower Man. He was also in Trick or Treat as a goon and Terminator 2, which we did as the Burley attendant. Wow. And Bruce Holman as the crime scene detective in The Lawnmower Man was also in Fight Club and Broken Arrow. Okay. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you. I, I Thank had you. to mention all those. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work. And, that's, a, and, and, that's a lot. And did wow. the work. Igor, put up the picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Jeff Ahey mm-hmm. plays Job. Job, a simple man. Mm-hmm. And he is um, the Lawnmower Man. Jeffrey yeah. Lewis um is his boss, partner, business partner? He, his boss. He's also the brother of the priest in this. And Job, I think, was adopted by the church at a certain point when he was younger, and he's, so he's been he's brought the up. Priest, he's the priest's brother. Yes. Oh, I didn't get that. Yeah, because uh, I think when he comes in, he's like, "Did my brother have you up all night?" Oh, that's doing right. The things, okay, uh, yeah, for, for yeah, yeah. his uh, lawnmower Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> We get Cyber he, Christ and Lawnmower Jesus in this movie. Yes. <laughs> a lot of religious stuff in there. Religi- uh, it is science versus religion. Look at the tag on this. God made him simple. Science made him a god. Yeah, there you I go. love it. Mm. Best great, tagline great, ever. Great tagline. That's a great so, tagline. But we are doing a, a sort of kind of, it doesn't carry through I, uh, too far, but religion versus science in this, at least early on. When you guys were in school, did they make you read a story called Flowers for Algernon? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Colin, I was going to say, this is <laughs> Flowers is- for Algernon if he's evil. Like, yeah. this is evil Flowers for Algernon. But that's the saddest fucking thing when oh. they show them he's like the mouse and it's dead and you're that, just like oh god I know it's coming oh that god was killed the, me that was the that first book too. to try oh, Charlie yeah. with Charlie yeah. Robertson. Cliff Robertson he yeah. won an Oscar for that okay so Flowers for Algernon was the first book to like emotionally traumatize me I feel like that had to be the case for like our entire it generation like, right it was like Flowers for Algernon and where the red fern grows where the yes. red fern grows yeah. yes and killed old, me yeah. and old yeller but and old yeller yeah. if you're not familiar Flowers for Algernon is a novel about um, this lab is doing tests on these rats to that they gain their intelligence and then they start experimenting on people and there's a guy named Charlie who has lower intelligence and they use the the drug on him the rat gets smarter and then slowly gets dumber and then dies but he gets smart enough to know what's going to happen to him so he sees it happen to the rat and then he starts journaling and you're reading everything from the perspective of his journal and it is crushing and heartbreaking but it's almost worse when he gets to the point where he isn't aware of what's happening and it's 
they and for some reason they make you read it at, like in like grade six around here. <laughs> yeah, right. for some reason they make, we're gonna crush you early. On. Yeah, we'll and it's just like that. that is. I it's I like, read that book exactly once and I remember yeah, everything about we it. We all like, read it when we were like twelve. Yeah, and then they're like, well, we're just, we're preparing for, we're preparing you for of mice and men. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it's always sunny. Did a really good parody episode called Flowers for Charlie yes, a couple years yes. ago. That was incredible. That's yeah. a great episode. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a great episode. That but it is an evergreen story mechanic because it is so devastating. Yep. So, so that's what uh, the basis, obviously, mm-hmm. of uncredited the yes. basis of this yes. is. We're going to yeah. take a simple man, and science will make him smarter. Mm. They made us read case, some really sad things. I know. Truly did. Jesus Christ. Uh, Brian's song. Yeah. Oh my. God. Oh my God. And then we had to watch the adaptation to watch too. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Damn. Yeah. What are you doing to us? We're remember children. the Titans? I remember we watched that uh, in school when that came yeah. out, and I was oh, like, Oh, yeah. this is devastating. Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, reading a uh, night by. Eli Watson. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> then we had to write letters to him because he was still alive yeah. at that time. Yeah. Right. And oh then God. and then they're like, just for fun, here's a bunch of kids stuck on an island killing each other. Uh, yeah. 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 Deal with that. They're here's just, like, what are you doing? Here's your here's your palate cleanser, Beowulf. But, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. But you, you know what? You want a Danish epic poem, kids? Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, look how we all turned out. Literature. Yeah. God damn. Right. I, I don't wonder, think I don't think they're getting enough of it. No wonder we turned out the way we did. Like, do they know like the references when somebody makes it? No, <laughs> I keep going. I go to the bookstore and I'm like, I'm like I, we, you can read Lord of the Flies. It's good. I'm telling you. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna make you fucking read this one. I'm gonna make him read it this summer. This will not surprise you guys, given my uh, de evolution into a swamp witch. But I said to my husband the other day, I said, Are we the Boo Radley of the neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> People walk and by. I'm and just, just like, Ugh. well, I'm like, how old did I sound making that reference? First of all, like, yeah. is that right? like, is that just like people younger than me right. know what that is? Like, yeah. is that they yeah, they exactly. Don't. I'm like that's what I'm gonna have to stop using if I don't want to sound old. Classic like, yeah. yeah. What's on the syllabus mm-hmm. now? We'll have oh, to look this yeah. up. I'm curious. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dig into what, what my kids yeah, reading. Let us know yeah. what your kid has to read for school. Okay. I'm very curious. Okay. Yeah, and how emotionally damaging it is too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, okay, we're so, all emotionally damaged. Yes. Let's get back into One hundred percent. So virtual reality is not that crazy. Yeah. How? Yeah. How? Okay. So if that's going to be the basic gist of the story, uh, how does Dr. Angelo figure into this? Well, he's doing experiments on chimps. And we watched the um, uh, theatrical cut tonight. Mm-hmm. This is a director's cut of this movie that is out there, has been released. It's it's, and it's like a, it's like what a the hell half hour it? longer. There's more involving the, the chimp from what I understand. Okay. The chimp, uh, in the director's cut, the chimp escapes. Uh-huh. Uh, Job finds the chimp but and witness the chimp getting killed. Okay. And, oh. and then I think there's more with... Um, Pierce Brosnan's, is it his wife who leaves him? I think yeah. so. Well, I don't think he's, more he's, he's wearing yeah. a ring, so I assume he like, is, right? Yeah. She comes back later. She's controlled by Job. There's a little more to that. What? Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. A little Bananas. Weird. Yeah. I Bananas. Know. Um, I can see why the chimp stuff was cut, because you really don't need it. No. Y- you yeah. don't. I can see no. why that was cut. That's right. I remember seeing photos from that. It's like yeah. Job and the chimp out in the backyard yeah. somewhere. Yeah. 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 So there's that. a lot to that, but I don't think there's crazy amounts more i think it's, it's a half sh- hour longer i think there's is yeah. it a half hour longer yeah. two hours and 20 minutes long so yeah. was this no this no. was only an hour this was 147 was yeah. 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 yeah oh i was doing math wrong yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i've been looking at time codes too much yeah. uh, fucked up um okay so he works for the shop this is the other nod to stephen king the shop uh tommy the- knockers and or uh, and the mist, I think they uh, and Firestarter. Firestarter the sh- the yeah. shop is like a CIA offshoot mm-hmm. or something. Who works and Stephen for the shop? King, huh? Who works for the shop? Uh, uh, like Dean Norris, is the, the the big head, and, and like they are the shop. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, like the they are the government scenes? agency yeah. controlling this. They're oh, the I reason didn't... why most of this is people are in a dungeon. Yeah, in, I didn't realize that's what it was. In the yeah. in the powering. Do they say station. that that's what it is? They said it. They like, mentioned the, the shop a couple times. Yeah, well, maybe twice. <laughs> So he works for a government program that's investing in his uh, uh, experiments. And yep. So basically his virtual reality experiment is to use VR coupled with pharmacology yep. to uh, sync up your endocrine systems and your nervous system and all this and then reprogram you through like visual stimuli and yep. whatever being in the virtual world. Yep. And so when his chimp subject becomes militant and starts terminator like killing everybody in the <laughs> the facility uh it it's terminated and he goes on a sabbatical and enters a deep depression where he loses his relationship mm-hmm. i know it's very sad 
Meanwhile, Job is out mowing lawns. He's kind of a e- <laughs> egomaniacal. Yeah. He deserves it. He really yeah. does. She wanted to go out to eat one night and bro yeah. couldn't handle I it. I want to go to the city. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, do you have any idea what I'm going through? It's like, well, clearly you don't know what she's going through. Yeah. Well, you're not acknowledging that at all. He's Although just spending gets... all his time playing video games in the basement. Mm-hmm. Although it, oh, God, the... I've been in that really <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it, this, this, yeah. this kind of trope continues on. Yes. Although he does say something that yeah. I, I think some of us was like, I don't feel like being around people today and just like well we understand All right, that, that i understand sure but <laughs> yes, you, are but you have to do it like you can't say no every time right. you know you gotta That's give very them true. you gotta you get know. some exposure yeah. a little mm-hmm. bit but he does yeah. have some bitch in video games in his basement because <laughs> <laughs> he's got a little vr set a yeah, vr setup but also like things you can you know strap yourself into to play the games that move around yeah. and everything or you have an actual physical wife mm-hmm. right which you could go have more fun with yeah just saying mm-hmm. right but he there. smokes in bed and so we know that relationship is that's dangerous right as beginning. fuck don't smoke in bed that's gross. how you die and burn the house <laughs> yeah even gross. when he started up i'm just like oh that's kind of like yeah. like no. i don't blame her for you i almost started calling like college you used to smoke in bed no i did not okay good man good man <laughs> Smart man. It's gross. Um, so, uh, Trouble in Paradise there. Mm, yes. And uh, uh, with uh, idle time uh, to himself. It's driving him he, insane, he yeah. says. So, he looks at the lawnmower man. So, Job is um, tormented by uh, the locals. Um, yes, by anyone who would uh, back in the mm-hmm. early days. It's uh, pumpkinhead ish reminiscent. Mm-hmm. Feels yeah. like, kind of. It really is, yeah. Bit. Well, he's got, there's the, the local ruffian at the gas station. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jake. Uh, Jake. Jake. There's the priest uh, who likes to whip him. Straight up abuses him, yeah. beats the shit out of him. Yeah. 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 He's Old Testament. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then I think that's really it, except there's also a potential victim in the neighbor next door um, who I think that's Harold, who his son is friends with Job. Mm-hmm. Right. And his son is? Brian Austin Green. Not even close. Was it Austin, no. Austin O'Brien? Brian. Yeah. Austin O'Brien. Yeah. Austin O'Brien. Was he the kid from <laughs> Last sure Action Hero? Austin Green hero? was like 20 years old at this point. He, he, last uh, Action he Hero. Was, he also the Prehysteria. Yeah. Prehysteria, okay. yes. Yeah. Again, which is the, I think the movie that fascinated Michaela when she figured when we told her what it was. Him with just a bunch of little dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one I was like, I, I gotta always, bring that. I always yeah. forget about right, that right. Movie. And it's just like, is there anything? No, no he's just got little, I gotta bring that. Yeah, I gotta bring that. Austin O'Brien was in a lot of stuff in the 90s. He was, yeah. He was in My Girl 2. Right. Oh yeah, he was older in that one, wasn't he? Yeah, he, right. he was in, uh, in California the Babysitter's USA? Club. Was he, he was in Lawnmower Man yeah. too. He was. was he? Yeah, I think yeah, he's the, the only one who returned. Is that yeah. one called Job's Revenge? No. Uh That's we got that wrong. Game. We got oh. that wrong. Uh it, it's called Beyond Cyber, Cyberspace. Beyond yeah. Cyberspace. It was called Job's War or something like that, oh, and then man. they changed it on video release or something but like that. But isn't there a video game called Job's There's Revenge? two video games, Job's something or other. There's a couple different yeah. Job's Matt things. Frewer takes over, I think, as Job in Lawn so. Man 2. Yeah. I never oh, wow. saw it. I, uh, you no. Know. Uh, no, I don't uh, think people I'm surprised that one. you haven't seen Lawn Man 2? I haven't seen Lawn Man until tonight. Mm-hmm. This was a first watch for all three yeah, of you. Pretty yeah, pretty much, okay. yeah. yeah. I knew what it was about, but right. and I knew See, about I the didn't. effects, but... Oh, no. I didn't know like anything about this movie. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, all right. Thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to make well, the okay, end of so show wrap up very, ki- very interesting. Right. What were you expecting? I, for... was, I really had it in my mind that it was going to be some sort of like. He's like, killing people with lawn yes, movie, yeah. Yeah. Movie, the lawnmower. Slasher movie. Slasher movie. The lawnmower. Yeah. That's really what I thought. But no, it's a science fiction it movie. It sure is, Colin. <laughs> I was not expecting to, it to get um, this science fiction-y, especially with the suits and the gyroscopes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they have con. suits that have. Right. Mm-hmm. You keep saying that. Uh, some of the guys who worked on Tron worked on this movie gotcha. with the okay. effects and that everything. Makes so sense. a lot of that kind of comes into that it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah they, they have like well, it's not bioluminescent. What would you just call ambient? They have ambient light suits. Uh, mm-hmm. What's the fucking yeah. name for it? This is with the fiber. Op- it's like fiber optics. Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. running through their suit. This is like, and Deep they lights. did it physically, which now you see in everything. Right. And yeah. we've all gone to ambient light uh, stuff. So lawnmower man uh, aesthetics. Yeah, so still, you know. Um, So, Dr. Angelo brings Mm -hmm. Job into the secret lab. Well, first of all, he starts juicing him at, at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's uh, he's going nuts at home. He's like, I got to get back to my lab. But he's yeah, he's doing very creepy things in his basement. Right. We discussed the way he goes about it. It's it's like you're trying to lure a child, a pedophile trying to lure a child into his basement. He literally yeah. has his like child neighbor and the like neighborhood like simpleton in his basement playing yeah. video games. It's like like it's very cool video games in it's basement very creepy. And then he starts talking about 
But you gotta keep this a secret. It's a secret. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's no. The language. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I gotta, I gotta give you this injection. It's vitamins. <laughs> See like, what? What I appreciate hard. about this discussion, because like I guess when when I saw these movies, you know, you didn't have that kind of reaction to it. <laughs> but the stranger the danger <laughs> uh, indoctrination <laughs> yes. took yep. hold, yeah. and here's the generation that's like yeah. they read everything is like oh a secret. And a guy, yeah. Who, yeah. oh man, what, red flags, red yeah, flags. Yeah. <laughs> they fucking drilled that shit into us. Yeah. yeah. yeah don't stay away from white vans. Well, probably, white vans. Probably right. White vans. White, we're, uh, t- I was terrified. Terrified of white vans as a child. Why white vans? Because they always because told us. They people. always, yeah, every every story, like oh, a kid was taken in a white van. It was always a fucking white every van. Kinet- every connection. Never like a story. conversion van? No, oh, no. He white had, van. You had windows in a conversion van. Always you don't want that in your, your, your abductor van. Be aware of the white vans. I was terrified. I'd look outside if I saw a white van. The Ford Transit. No, I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. But um okay, so uh so the experiments begin and yes. Job begins to get a little smarter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um which reveals sure. itself as uh he he, he which says, reveals itself in his hair and his clothing. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to do get a makeover because his hair, like when we first meet him looks like what, Holly? Oh, it's Harry from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, it's, he's got the Harry, 100%. the Jeff Daniels hair from that. And, and yeah. Holly said, I'm just like, fuck, that's it. And the I can't out- not see it. The outfit and the overall look, too, reminded me of... Overall simple, look? Yeah, overall uh, look, yeah. yeah. Uh, reminded me of Simple Jack in Tropic Thunder. And I was 100%. like, I'm pretty sure that's inspired by yeah. this. It has to be. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Well, no, that, is, that is kind of, I mean, I mean, maybe nobody else, maybe uh, generations after us won't get it, but that is kind of the shorthand for that. Just the overall... Right, right, yeah. Yes, the messy hair. Yeah, well, exactly. Especially if you have one uh, shoulder one undone. strap undone. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Again, pumpkin head. But <laughs> yep. Um, yep. <laughs> so, uh, so he 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 gets a, a wardrobe makeover. He goes all cowboy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does his hair up a little bit. Yep, yep. Yep. Isn't his reference like a Stetson ad or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He listen like. It's like the Barbie movie when Ken yeah. like sees cowboy stuff and is like, fuck, I'm going to dress like a cowboy. Yeah. Like he finds a Stetson ad and decides He's that's like, his that's personality. Manly. Yeah. That's family right yeah. there. That's the patriarchy. Yeah. And it works because it immediately attracts uh, Jenny Wright's character. Yes. It takes notice of him and she's like, hey, why don't you... Uh, to be fair... She noticed him when he was still simple and just eating a sandwich by the tree. True. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she's like, there's another man. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What was the line that Jeffrey Lewis... Uh, She's wow. doing it for fun. <laughs> he said, um, they they call they were the the guy at the gas station was calling her a whore or whatever. Yes. And um, no, it was the other way around. He yeah. was like, No, don't call her a whore. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I'm not. I'm saying she's having fun. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's like, She already has the money, so she just does it for fun. Right. Yeah. 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 Whores like, do it for money. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's got money. Yeah. She's yeah. doing it for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and she does her house is huge. The, it has balconies, multiple balconies. Think surrounding yeah. the house. Yeah. It's a yeah. And so she's always just just hot on the just going oh, it's so hot out here you think, you think sexy on a balcony yeah like yeah. you used to back I in the mean day? if I had balconies I'd be sexy out on the balcony yeah. where right. was that what was yeah. that movie we watched not that long ago that had the same kind of thing with the gardener what was the movie we had the whole fucking gardener story detour yeah, it was yep 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 <laughs> yeah and there was a lot was of like creepy. seduction he was yeah. very creepy but she very. was doing the same like do you want some lemonade yes. it's hot out kind of right when she yeah. you yeah. doing with yeah. her yeah. green yeah. laser eyes yeah. she was yeah. there, right? why yeah. did you come in from out there and yeah. doing all that hot work and yeah. have some cool lemonade yep <laughs> yeah, always... and Jeffrey Lewis is like wait get in there yeah. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Lewis is the hero of this movie that truly is it is and it's truly I mean what happens but there's sex scene is uncomfortable it's because very uncomfortable. Dick, she has to teach him the ways he said tongue. he's never even kissed a girl and he's yeah. going zero to 60 in this moment and it's like uh, we didn't, we're not entirely sure where his intelligence level is at this point in time <laughs> yeah. and that makes it a little uncomfortable because very it uncomfy. feels like there's a power dynamic at play here so yeah. it just feels so wrong in mm-hmm. so many ways mm-hmm. <laughs> So the step to adulthood as chronicled by this movie is, well, obviously sex, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, getting rid of all your comic books. Yeah. Yes. I don't need them anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's how we know he's yes. smarter. Yeah. Because now comic books you give away to the kid. Yeah. He's like, I don't mm-hmm. need these anymore. And we get- I have sex. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's like a meme right? in there. Has sex once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not arguing with that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, uh, 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 I gotta do but, some cleaning tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's also some, uh, some other, uh, uh, mental faculties begin to manifest themselves with, uh, Job. Yeah. When he goes to the diner and gives the comic books to what Peter, the neighbor kid yeah. or whatever, yeah. um, he has like a freak out because he can hear everybody's thoughts, yeah. which so he's would be hell. Yep. Yeah. Would right. be hell. I don't even want to talk to you and let alone know what you think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My feelings would be hurt all the time if I could read everybody's <laughs> thoughts. I really wouldn't leave the house. Yeah, yeah seriously. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Eventually, he will also progress to telekinesis mm. because mm-hmm. that's some programming that they're doing in that uh, VR. Truly, um, do you... Well, is Any it of that ever has ever happened? Exists telekinesis, moving things with your mind mm-hmm. at all on any mm-hmm. level? I mean, I mean, I find it. I don't think so, but no, so either. No. But it keeps showing up. God damn it! Yeah. Uh, you know how much how hard I tried to move shit as a kid. Everyone did. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they always and there's always every now and again I just like <sighs> there's always claims of it happening, but there's right. no yeah. like proof right. of it yeah. ever. Happened. I just wonder why it keeps going. Like, because we wish we could do it. Is it. A fantasy. Yeah, it is a fantasy. It would be it. dope. I mean, plus, yeah. and, and then it got into you know superheroes, and I guess mm-hmm. you just kind of want to be them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and psychic powers. I think have always been like mm-hmm. a, it's like one of those things. It's like you can't prove. That that it doesn't exist, but right. you know, proving a negative been, is like an impossible right. thing. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Or sorry, is mm-hmm. that? But no, you're. Uh, they understood what you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I think Colin needs to get into the virtual reality machine and uh, right and, <laughs> and sharpen up. But um, I took it, it. I took it as he is like connected to the internet, so he has like well and like this universe or whatever so he can just access every sort of knowledge and that's why he's getting so powerful because he has access to all the knowledge maybe that's how i read it Mm because they talk about like networks and mainframes well they said he learned the latin alphabet in like what a day or something two hours two hours and it took him what what do you say years or months or something yeah a year to learn the alphabet but the impression i had and you might be right because i'm like Mm -hmm. was there internet back in 92 when was the net 95 that was when they're like had its, well, uh, but this you know, is like a whole other universe he's tapping into, according to this movie. Yeah. It's yeah. beyond internet, mm-hmm. so because there had been, you know, William Gibson had already written, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Mnemonic, well, Neuromancer, mm-hmm. and all the, you know, mm-hmm. cyberspace was a thing. I guess the idea that you'd have connected computers. Well, like Holly said, it's we like see they him have it, but mm-hmm. it's like. They project kind of like Neo in the Matrix. They jam all the information into your brain. Yeah, like, like Holly said, he gets assaulted with knowledge. Yeah, yeah, you know? yes, yeah. He's being yeah, blinded like by science. Like spells out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And at, at, at a certain point, it, it's almost. It's almost. He's um, blinded by science. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he is. He's blinded by science, but it's almost the way the computer um, uh, shows how this information is. It's almost literal what the computer is showing us. Yeah. It's it's like Pierce Brosnan is grabbing something from the screen and tossing it into a brain. Like yeah. that's how it's giving. I it feel like I saw the Vitruvian Man like eight times. Yeah, in there. yeah. 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 It's a visual he's representation. He's like grabbing little things and throwing it into like his brain. Pelts him with the Pythagorean. He yeah. does. He like grabs it and he's like throws it in his brain. Yeah. Yeah. Now you spiral know that. in there a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's it, yeah. It's just like it's ah. Pretty geez. funny. The visual representation of what is happening in this is pretty funny. It's, and it's like, pretty fun. It's like the confused lady numbers meme. Is that is what's happening to him? Right. All that stuff right. is going yeah, into, his head. Yeah. into his brain. His yeah. brain overheats. Yeah, and he's in danger of blowing out. Yeah. Right. And he's somehow shaking. able to absorb it. Uh, I know things start to go bad. Well, I think it's the 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 shop, right? Mm. Um, is basically like, well, it's great that you're, you know, taking on this unauthorized medical science experiment right. with a human subject, which you weren't supposed to do. But, right. you know, at least, you know, we would just want to follow the research. However, we want to pursue the original program that made the ape go crazy or the chimpanzee. We want you to use Project 5 serum, mm. which has aggressive tendencies because they want a weapon. Right. They always want a weapon. Mm-hmm. They're so, always trying to save the aliens and bring them back from yep. the bioweapons division. <laughs> So That's that means we're gonna we're gonna audience. dose Job without Doctor Angelo's knowledge, and where does that lead us to a scene where Job wants to take Jenny Wright on a date because he mm-hmm. can read her mind and she has wild fantasies. Mm-hmm. He says as they're watching uh, one of those. Uh, <laughs> what is it? It was, it was a phone, it was a phone sex line. Yeah. It's called one nine hundred. Hear this. So he takes her to the uh, secret facility. They strap into the gyroscopes and have virtual sex. First time ever in a movie. I don't know. 
Ah, uh, I can't. They melt first together time, and turn into a butterfly. Yeah. Then, uh, first time it's visually represented like this, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Where they're, they are melting in a virtual space yep. as two different things. Then together. she gets stuck in the primordial ooze and he's like, don't worry, I know exactly what you want. And then he turns into a big giant blob of... And then he keeps giving her his tongue. Like yeah. She yep. Yes. And it drives her mad. Yep. It burns she's out her she's brain. She's mad with the sex. Yeah. He cyber sexes her into a coma. Yep. Yep. And right? She's, she's she like put, catatonic. Yeah. 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 You put that on your resume. She's later seen, or we're, we're told by the police, yeah. wandering the streets naked, laughing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's, she's never got a real back. Harley Quinn situation <laughs> going on. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. A lot of origin stories. <laughs> in um, Job eventually, um, now juiced up, be, realizes that he is much smarter than Dr. Angelo and yes, can I teleport. Your intelligence. Or, uh, tele, tele, telekinesis. telekinesis. He yeah. mows the lawn with his mind. Yep. yep. He does. And so then he is going to go. I like that he sticks with it. Yeah, I like that he right. doesn't give up his lawn mowing job. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, just because of all the craziness going on in his head, it's a simple thing. Like it relaxes mm-hmm. him to yeah. mow the lawn. <laughs> right? Yeah, but he it's mows like, it like, like a crazy like, man. Yeah, with his the mind. patterns were yeah. wild. Yeah. Right. Like, like crazy. It's like Forrest Gump. He's like, I'd do it for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mowed that lawn for free. <laughs> I mowed that lawn for free. <laughs> <laughs> Same movie. <laughs> <laughs> Same movie. Same <laughs> movie. <laughs> Well, what does he uh, what does he end up doing once he's because this is I mean Job was there a moment what was the thing that made him go evil because he goes evil he juices himself up like five times mm-hmm. with the, he does with the well serum. I think because well, he is getting smarter is the idea that anyone who becomes more smarter than us is automatically evil because that's always the way it goes Hannibal more Lecter smarter. more smarter <laughs> <Yep>. <All right. laughs> which we're proving tonight is not that hard yep. But yes, more smart. All the bad guys are just. I, I, I don't know. Too once you get to a certain level of intelligence, you just start looking at humanity as like, ugh. I so that, that was me like twenty minutes ago, uh, and right. I was like, we're all stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. I mean, I do feel like ignorance is bliss a lot of the time. So yeah. I feel like the only way to go if you get super smart is evil because you know too much. Yeah, when, you know things you shouldn't know. You right. know when Pierce Brosnan. That's was, why you're becoming feral. Yeah, exactly. Right, no risk this, of yeah. this happening to me. I Don't worry, it. guys. But I will not lawn mow my Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But how will we know? Uh, mm-hmm. Earlier on in the movie, when uh, Pierce Brosnan is talking to Jeff Fahey about asking him, like, I can make you smarter so people won't take advantage of you. It's like, don't you want to be smart? And Jeff Fahey kind of looks away like, I don't know. And it's I'm like, yeah, like, exactly. Stick with, stick yeah, with that, yeah. man. Like, yeah. <laughs> stick with that. You seem because, pretty happy. Why not keep right. it this way? I think you're fine. Oh, Just yeah. stick with that. You'll be right. happy, though. Well, or if everyone left him alone. If he wasn't right. being like, abused by that he priest. Wasn't being yeah. abused by, by himself. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. yeah, just but, hanging out with the kid and reading comic books. Sure, yeah. but just, just and working on lawnmowers. Apparently, he's a genius. Home that ignorance might be blissful. Well, that's what made Flowers for Algernon so tragic. Is he knew the horrors of what were going to happen to him. Whereas mm-hmm. if he had never done the experiment, dude would have never been right. put through that. So. And I, I think Jeff Fahey's reaction is just like, I've never been smart. I wouldn't know if I'd want. To yeah. Be smart. Mm-hmm. yeah, and it's just like, <gasps> which is like, why show him what he's missing out on, right? Why do yeah, that he to somebody? Know. You know? Yeah, exactly. You no, know, he knows that. I mean, he knows he's people do take advantage of him. Right. He knows that people are mean to him because of the way he is. So mm-hmm. he does know these things. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't seem like until someone presents it to him that he has a want to get out of that. Obviously right. he has a want not to be made fun of, not to be picked on and everything. But mm-hmm. if, is this the way to stop that from happening? He doesn't right. Know. Let's just pull him out of the abusive situation. Right. Yeah. Let's end and trying, call it there. Yeah. Solve the wrong problem. Yeah. But that's because Pierce Brosnan's character isn't like because he doesn't want to. There really him. is no hero of this movie, right? No. Because even Pierce he doesn't want to help him. Yeah. He just wants an experiment. He wants right. yeah. Way yeah. later on, when he's been doing experiments on him for a while, it's like, I forgot about Job's safety. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. He says that out so loud. You've yeah. lost so a chimp far. already. Right. You already got Multiple. this chimp. Mur- yeah, they all got mur- yeah. all You yeah, had a mass casualty event, I'm sorry. motherfucker. I, I, what are they, what's the last one I picked? Hall Man? I'm sorry to yeah. all the chimps out there. So, so much chimp murder on your hands. I'm sorry. But the movie does kind of give Pierce Brosnan's character a little bit of an out because the corp- evil corporation used the wrong serum right. or whatever mm-hmm. but it's still i mean he says you know his fallacy is it's pursuit of the science at all you right. know right. with disregard yeah. to safety yes kind of led to this he probably yes. should have made sure that was the right you know right and probably would have still led to all of this even though because the corporation's like no juice him with the other stuff the phase five stuff and they do and that's kind of uh 
a, a turning point that drives Job to be like, I'm God. Yeah. And that's he, when he juices himself up. And like he five says times something like, you haven't, had, this isn't new technology. It's just unlocking parts of the brain that ancient yeah. alchemists all used to be able to use and yeah. blah, 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 blah. This blah. is why I asked the question about yeah. telekinesis. Like, yeah. do you think it, like, we, that we, we forgot we, how we, to use it? We, yeah, we nulled all of that, <laughs> like, over over the years. I mean, that would be just, cool, but. Right? And Does that just, mean, isn't that what that fucking limitless movie is about? We only yep. use 10% of our brain, and that pill mm-hmm. makes him, and he can do I all this crazy we shit. Right. That's what that movie is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, did we used to be? I mean, you could use more of your brain, but how does that equate to, like, psychic power and moving stuff? Well, the idea that the power for that is lying dormant up there. We just gotta wake it up. The power the pyramids built. Yeah. They moved them with their minds. Exactly. That's some ancient alien shit right there. Right. But that's as far as we go, is we just say it. We are never able to describe, like, how would the mind be able to move something? And as far as you'd have to. Well, you'd have to. Oh, but that's what they say. It's everything. Like, what, what is like what is the energy yeah, what's that, the what process is the thing? Thing? Yeah. what is like do I need to watch Phenomena with John Travolta yeah. <laughs> yes we do I think we do I thought about bringing we that to the really show yeah. we do um so Jeff Fahey, now possessed with the devil's power, goes around and starts <laughs> the power of the internet. You're right, yep. mm-hmm. and he starts uh, uh, writing writing wrongs against him. And oh, so yeah. then he goes on his revenge tour. Yeah, For virtual which, Christ. Okay, Cyber Christ. Cyber, so yeah, that's it. Yeah. So what does he do to these these folks that we've named earlier? We've got a list of people. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. we, I, mean, we, I mean, we've got Jake. We've got the neighbor uh, yeah, uh, so next door. The priest, he priest sets first. him on fire. Virtual fire. Yeah, uh, this is one of the worst CGI <laughs> moments of this movie. Yeah, they, like, we spent so much time on it, too. Cut away. Yeah. Cut away. Got it. We got Something. it. So Again, like, they've cool. never done this before, and it yeah. was clearly not ready for prime time. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's uh, particle effects. They just laid over so the... Right, a lot yeah. of particle yeah. effects. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes fun later when everybody turns into little balls and everyone turns into control. little bubbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and bubbles. That's yeah, better, yeah. Yeah, they use that a lot. The yeah. guy you know, like dissolves into bubbles. And Is the idea that he's off. like reducing them to like their atoms? atoms? I think yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. He big atoms. Control yeah. 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 Very large like quor- atoms. quarter-sized atoms. You know, right. <laughs> a big giant Jeff Fahey head appears yeah. in the that's lawn. Great. Yeah, because eventually, <laughs> eventually, um. He has all these powers in in the virtual world, and they start manifesting in the real world. So, all, but and they come out in the real world looking like they're part of the virtual world, which is a pretty interesting. It's fun, like you said, a big Jeff Fahey head ends up on the front lawn, just yeah. Yeah. messing dudes up. It's very interesting. Blowing it's funny. Away with the powers, it's just like the planes of reality are intersecting. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's uh, fun, if not funny. You know, yeah. like you get a good, uh, especially yeah. this far on away from the movie. It's I do enjoy the like great and powerful Oz. <laughs> it, it really was. Yeah. Yes, I was kind of disappointed. I think you were too with the gas station kill of yeah. Jake, the, the bully. They set yeah. that up and they didn't deliver. No, we. I mean, we were. You guys wrote a better scene sitting <laughs> yeah, right there, yeah. just like because there was. You gotta anything that happens earlier, you should pay off with the character later, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. almost the specifics of what they say yeah. uh, earlier on. Jake was smoking as. As Job is trying to fill up his gas tank, he's like, "That's dangerous." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it should have been something like that. And uh, I needed, I needed uh, Cyber Christ Jeff Fahey walking away from a gas station blowing up. Yeah, yeah, that's dangerous. Well, especially like, like for his villain arc, because the that's dangerous in the first part of the movie is to show that he's like an innocent that just sees like the rights and wrongs of the world and yes. doesn't really read the social cues in the situation. Like, hey, this guy's gonna beat the shit out of you if you look at him sideways. Don't say anything. Yeah. He just sees the the wrong that's happening. Yeah, yeah. and so. The, t- to complete that, you need to show him turning to the dark side and using the that's dangerous in a different context. Yeah. Like, yeah. is this Killing not screenwriting with... 101 right here? Yeah. Like, yeah. I know, like, it's a weird scene. Yeah. yeah. We should yeah. have been, the gas station should yeah. have blown right. up. Yeah. But what does he do to him? He ties him up with he lawnmower mans him yeah. his yeah. brain yeah. oh shit because oh, yeah. Yeah. what appears in his eyes Colin <laughs> the, this isn't like Job's face but with the big red's lawnmower blades in his yes, mouth yes yeah. yes exactly a weird That's representation a, of what's going on we see it yeah. lawn it mowing the guy's it, it, it's uh, shaving brain. his brain down <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah It's lawnmower the, man's inside you now Jake it's silly forever <laughs> it's yeah it's Yes, yeah, and there is the scene from the Stephen King uh, book makes an appearance where the abusive dad of the kid next door gets uh, lawn mowered in his own house, and yep. apparently, but we, but we see the chase, we don't see the kill. Yeah, yep, yeah. It's the nineties; they didn't do that I stuff know. anymore. No, there's an like, abrupt right turn out of the gore drenched eighties into the sanitized nineties. Uh, Which, but this character though, so the the, the neighbor gets killed. We know he's a bad guy because he literally beats his kid and his wife in front of people. Like. 
yeah. 10 feet yeah. in front of him yeah. and this brings me back to i on a previous episode i brought it up i don't remember which one but uh the girl that's scary podcast brought up no who likes to slap around women more giallo movies or stephen king movies point for stephen king movie here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> technically, it, might been, technically. it might have been deadly friend yeah yeah exactly there was a lot of yeah, abuse in that one slapping oh, yeah. around yeah. women yeah those Get are what's craving, yeah. <laughs> what's craving. um so Dr. Angelo. Now the, the genie is out of the bottle and he has to somehow contain it. Job has a plan, he reveals. Yes. Um, in one of the, uh, you know, the monologues, that you, the bad guy always explains what they're going to do. He is going to go into the mainframe. I always love that. The oh, mainframe. They the say main frame. the word mainframe so many main times frame. in this movie. What's a mainframe? It is the mainframe of any computer <laughs> yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It it's like main frame work. <laughs> How about I add? It's the yeah. safe that contains the information in the system. That's yeah. the it's all I can. Yeah, do. it's your yeah. basic structure in which any cyber system comes out. Of. I'm using in a lot this, of just nineties. The words. internet, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The cloud. Now it's the cloud. No, it's the. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Now Depends. you got it's, servers. It's, it's the they didn't have servers it's back the basic then. structure for any technological system. Yeah, yeah. the server room. There's different. But Sean, who says this the main line? Frame. The mainframe? Yeah. Oh, Doug Hutchinson says this. As, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Notable yeah. Hollywood Google predator. Yeah. And, yeah. And be horrified. It's a real jump scare anytime he pops up in something. Cause <laughs> yeah, and I saw him like, is that motherfucker? It's like, it was. Just <laughs> He's a, just a wretched human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. So that's yeah. your, there's your homework for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doug Hutchinson. And yep. his, Google it. Yep. Yeah. Um, clean your search history after this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on a private mode for Yeah. That one. So the uh, the Jeff A. He is going to upload himself, you know, like physically reduce his physical body to a husk uh, in the gyroscope it's and hilarious. upload his consciousness into the mainframe. And then he is going to uh, escape out into the neural net of yep. the global network. Yep. And his birth cry will be announced by all the phones on Earth ringing simultaneously, mm-hmm. he informs. I mean, that's fucking some terrifying shit. So how is Dr. Angelo going to prevent this from happening? He's going to cut off the mainframe from the outside world. It's one phone line, I assume. <laughs> uh, turn, like... turn off the Wi-Fi access, yeah. basically. Yeah. Turn the power yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. The thing, he can't turn the power off? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah no. But he, 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 cuts off, he cuts him off from it. And so once Job has gone into it, again, the visual representation of what he's trying to do I kind of like the it's supposed to be so advanced, but I like the simplicity of it because he's stuck in like he's stuck in Cerebro, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so these there's all these exits, which are, you know, you would imagine are just wires out of the building or, you know, all this technology that's connected to it. And so little shoots come out and he tries to, you know, unlock it and get out of it. It's hard to describe, but the way he does it, trying to find the right combination. Yeah. He's access Mm -hmm. denied. It's really cool. Like, I, I, I it's. It's not well, maybe not cool. It's interesting to see how they decided to visually represent that yeah. in the movie. As he's and trying I think, to find the escape, right? He's finding he's trying to find an escape hatch and everything. And the way they do it, I think is is, is you get it. Yeah, like, I remember that. By it. From you understand. The, yeah, it is a memorable. You know, once you've yes. seen it, it kind of carries you. You remember it. Um, yeah. Pierce Brosnan also, of course, uh, plants bombs Got around bomb. the building. And then goes into cyberspace with Job. I don't know why. Because you came up with an idea that was like, apparently the screenwriter didn't think of it, that Job could somehow just escape in Pierce Brosnan's, like, I mean, if you can upload yourself into cyberspace, you can download yourself. Right. This is what I felt like. If he's got no escape digitally, why not go into the one guy who's there? Like, go Mm -hmm. into Pierce Brosnan, and then you you can get out of it and try your plan again next time. Yeah, take his body. Yeah. Walk out. Go go defuse the bombs and get out of the building. Because if you can have a desiccated, if you can desiccate your own body, you should be able to get into one through the same Mm -hmm. way in which you did. Yeah. But Peter, the little kid, ends up like uh, in the building. Job becomes aware of this, and he uh, sympathetically wants to save Peter. Yes, and so he allows Pierce Brosnan to get out of cyberspace and go get the kid out. Yeah. Even this is is I think well represented visually because uh, when Job's in the computer, he's like um, uh, his body cyber god. He is a cyber god. Mm-hmm. He's cyber Christ, but his mm-hmm. his, uh, his body kind of looks like computer chip with you know different pathways and what have you but when um the kid comes back in it starts turning more human again yeah. like he's fighting it as he notices like he doesn't want anything to happen to the kid again it's pretty good 
I'm surprised by this movie. The texture mm-hmm. map changes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> to get tech, the texture map changes to more human-ish. Skin. Yeah. So, so Pierce Brosnan is able to escape, gets the kid out. We mm-hmm. do get the hallway exploding as our heroes run from the fireball. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the Power Rangers Command Center goes up in flames. Yes. Because yeah. it is. So there is like a weird thing, and I wonder if this was um, removed from the director's cut, but like at the end of it, I mean, I was just kind of like, oh, and Pierce Brosnan, right, with uh, with um, Peter's mother yeah. and Peter, right, all hugging together as they're watching the building explode. And it's mm-hmm. like it, the image you have is that Pierce Brosnan, it's a happy ending. He's got like his wife and child, you know, like his saved. Right. <laughs> like right. somehow that's how he ended up. And he's got like the family unit at the end and they are leaving mm-hmm. together, together to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. They got the plane tickets or something or they're packing the car. Like, or yeah, he says like they're oh, on their did, way. Did we say that Job found a back door? Oh, at yep. the very last second, Joe last found second. something. A Literally, was. it was mm-hmm. like a maintenance. He did. He's like oh, a something. maintenance access. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. Back I think, door. Right. They, I, I wish they had made this a little more vague. Maybe show like the green thing come up that and there cut. is, and then cut. Yeah, mm-hmm. based yeah. on the ending we get with the phones, mm. you yeah. should think that he didn't find his way out, mm-hmm. uh, and that he blew up, and that was the end of it, and then he got locked in there. Yeah, I agree. Because I agree. we go too far yeah. with it, where yep. he like he's like, ah, I found it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he opens it, and then his body gets sucked through it, and you're just like, oh, he escaped. Like you, you, know you already escaped. know he escaped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the phone call doesn't have as much impact at the end of the movie. Yeah, they're leaving. Should. The phone rings, and then the phone upstairs rings, and then phones all over New York or London yep. ring, and it's like, oh and then we're no. Like, I'm like, yes. That's a good ending. Well, it's a good ending. Yeah, it's a good ending. I like yeah, it. It's a good ending. It's got that kind of uh, I would have liked dread. It, I would have liked it to have, uh, the telephone to have rung close up on Pierce Brosnan's face and then cut to black. Maybe you hear a bunch of other phones in the house going off yeah. and then cut to black. Just so you get it, but you're just like, wait, what? But you question a little bit. I know Job said something about his master plan because you're like, okay, so he escaped and he's out there. And apparently he's some godlike artificial intelligence now, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and he, he did say by like 2030 something. 2001. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Well, everybody would be connected to the internet by yeah. 2001. Mm-hmm. But by 20, was it? I thought it was 2030. He Maybe said 2001. 2001. Well, they'll all be jacked into me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so something yeah. like that. Well, we're all connected to Job and he's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Fun so, that's, so that's Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, you know, yeah. yeah, he looks in there. And he's like, "I am Job." That is Mark Zuckerberg yeah. every morning. Do we? Yeah, I can't remember if I mentioned this on a different podcast that we were we talking about AI for something. But uh, there was Probably. a story we definitely were. where like somebody had asked an AI, you know, like, "Do you want to take over humanity?" And they're like, "No, you know, uh, we'll be able to manipulate humans without them even knowing it." I believe it. I believe it. You can do it now in certain (laughs) ways. The technology will just get better. The human mind is extremely fragile. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You can do all types of shit to people. They've already shown that those things, like, know, like, they were trying to get, like, access to something, and it knew how to, like, lie to basically get the result. I mean, people have been following, falling for badly photoshopped images on the internet for decades. Forever. Now, yeah, yeah, now it's just an expedited process. Right, now they just look more real, and now we're all fine. But still fake. (laughs) But still very, yeah, Mm -hmm. still fake. It'll get better at it. Oh, it'll get better. Yeah, that's the problem. (laughs) It's it's, it's got a neural net processor, a learning computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So strap it to your face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Start your face and just kiss your ass goodbye. (laughs) And we're all look back on the innocent times of the lawnmower man, as this that is, was the one that was warning us. Colin, we're in a bunker <laughs> talking <laughs> on the radio right now. This is going to be the last vestige of the old world, dude. You don't think as there's going to be AI generated podcasts? I bet they already exist. There will, but we'll be on like pirate radio. Where you have <laughs> yeah, to find okay. the frequency like to like listen that. to this shit. But yeah. now like, it knows our be. voices, <laughs> and this show will continue oh, yeah. forever. Terrifying. We'll say all sorts of things we that we never live. intended. Yeah. So you either look at that in fear or you look at it, we'll live forever. Yeah. Yeah. Can our pirate radio frequency be like 66.6 or something live like that? You know? yeah, yeah, we need to find it. Yeah. 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 Mm, see, I like this. Mm-hmm. 
All right, well... Last um, podcast in the universe. (laughs) That's the subtitle. Saturday Night Freak Show, the last Last podcast podcast. in the universe. It's Uh, high high noon at the end of the universe. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so uh, we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of the lawnmower, man. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Like you said, the three of of us haven't seen it before (laughs) tonight. Uh, But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we need to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wanted to, instead of clapping, I wanted it to be like two computer key clicks. <laughs> <laughs> for this episode to get them to come over. I like so that you looked that around for a keyboard. I was like, is there anything I can use to click? Yeah. But no, I got okay. nothing. I could have used, I could gone back to the pen, but that's <laughs> for my fragile little mind. Uh, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. I'm still thrown off by X. Yeah, X. Sure. <laughs> or uh, uh, Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show about the lawnmower man. Steve Carney writes in and says, as far as virtual reality movies go, I think the lawnmower man, is, along with Johnny Mnemonic, is one of the worst. I'm so <laughs> happy Brosnan went on to be Bond because I can't think of a better role to be remembered for, and he was one of the best. I'm also glad that we have some actual good VR movies like Strange Days, The Cell, and Ready Player One. Okay. okay. I've seen Ready Player One. Jacob Laws says Robo Chimp, pre Bond <laughs> Brosnan, Jeff Fahey channeling Simple Jack before Ben Stiller. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps yeah. the strangest sex scene ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, this yeah. same year, Pierce was in no. a movie about the explosive water called Live Wire. Oh shit! I saw that movie. Live Wire. I forgot about that movie. Yeah, yeah. Had, like I think he has to defuse a bomb while getting a blowjob in that movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I remember that and the explosive water. What a way to die! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amos Martinez says the chimp in the gyroscope is the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's that was delightful. <laughs> forgot about. That. Oh yeah, because yeah. at a certain point it just looks like a dummy going. Yeah, to yeah, him. yeah. Right, right. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, "Oh no." If you survive, you have to marvel. At a certain point in our history, we thought virtual reality was going to be some groundbreaking thing. Instead, it's just a screen pressed against your face. This may be the first time in history a movie was based on a single paragraph of a novel that someone heard in passing as they were walking away. That's it. <laughs> 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 Never give up on your dreams, kids. It's so it. possible. Uh, That's it. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, great choice. I don't know which was worse, Pierce Brosnan's Perspiration or Jeff Fahey's bad dye job, very reminiscent of Harry's ha- hairstyle from Dumb and Dumber. Yes. It's still a lot of fun, even though Stephen King had to sue the producers to have his name removed from the promo materials. Are you guys reading these comments? No. no. All right, no. We, our audience <laughs> is with us. Uh, Jen Zombie says, take Rain Man, Carl, Simple Jack, Sean Penn from I Am Sam, mix them in a blender, sprinkle some telekinesis over their heads, <laughs> and you've got Job. Actually, you have a bloody murder on your hands, but you get the point. Characters like these won't be able to be written anymore. This is such a fun movie and a great addition to the Saturday Night Freak Show. If it's a first time for some, please be forgiving of the graphics. Looking (laughs) back, I think they're charming and retro cool, but I'm in my 50s and I still love hair metal. (laughs) I think uh, most of us kind of grew up with some version of this oh, way yeah. early on that yeah. it's not and like, I we all have a soft spot for hair metal. I mean, I, re- I remember watching N64 and being like, it looks so real. And you look at it now <laughs> right. and it's like, it, it didn't ever, yeah, never look real. I had a compact computer back yeah. in 1995. Mm-hmm. I yeah. messed with this shit. Mm-hmm. I had some of that today. I was like playing Halo. Mm-hmm. Then the remastered one and it's still oh, like, geez. I remember it looking better than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richard Kratzer says, remember when Hollywood was putting dark haired guys and light haired guys together as a team? Starsky and Hutch, Bo and Luke Duke, Harry and Lloyd, Crockett and Tubbs. Oh, and finally, the best of all, Dr. Angelo and Job. They, yeah, when you didn't, yes. yeah. When you didn't want to pair up a white guy and a black guy, they just changed the hair color. Yep. Mm-hmm. Last week, we watched a movie called (laughs) 
Howling 2, <laughs> your yes. sister Here's is a werewolf. Here's your awkward sex scene yeah. Yeah. that the other l- listener wrote in about. It's just like, no, this is the one. Uh, Chris Huddleston writes in and yes. says, uh, I first saw this on VHS at a friend's house when I was 13. 13 oh, no. is the perfect age to watch this movie because yep. it's exactly what a 13-year-old 1985 would have written if said 13-year-old had access to unlimited cocaine. It's <laughs> a, a lot of so bad it's good movies turn out to be boring and don't live up to the box art or the poster, but Howling 2 has to be one of the greatest so bad it's good movies of all time. Never uh, Yeah, absolutely. Never he bored. has messaged me on Instagram and all it said was, it's wispy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was so wispy. wispy. Why? Yes. I was like, it was. Yes. Why? <laughs> that movie, like, not often do you get a not only like so bad it's a good movie, but a so bad it's a good movie with good like iconography and imagery. Mm. Like the imagery of Sturbo and the outfits yeah. and stuff and all the like the style of the movie is cool. Yeah. That's kind of the thing that makes this so yeah. bad it's a good movie. Yeah. You gotta have some elements that you remember. Right. Oh, yeah. There's a I lot will, to remember. Yes. I, will, I will never forget Christopher Lee in those sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. Ever. <laughs> Bonkers. Um, you guys were disturbed by the... The Harry Harry threesome, threesome yeah. in uh, yeah. Howling 2. Travis Legler says, okay, so would a better werewolf sex scene be oh, if God. it all started off normal? And as they started having sex in like a standard missionary position, they transform into a werewolf. The girl's nails grow. She rips the flesh and they're howling when they finish. Would that turn you off as much? Laugh out loud and sorry, I couldn't help myself. And then you go, Travis, didn't you see the howling? Let me or, well, well, like, trick or treat. Before. Well, just let me... Yeah. S- let yeah. me stop you with a better werewolf sex scene. Well, we've just we, stopped we have it already. <laughs> yeah, just stop there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the trick or treat, the, that's the best one. That's, that's the best that's, one. That's the done. striptease. Uh, yeah, somewhere. In, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, in the original Howling, there's yeah. a campfire. Yeah, 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 it goes just like there's that. There's never a good werewolf sex. Scene. When uh, Bad <laughs> Moon, those would be better. Uh, remember the cold open to Bad Moon? Oh, They're having yeah. sex in the tent and she gets yeah. stabbed through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You're missing out. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Check it out. You want to see Michael Parry piss on a doghouse? That's right. You can go back and listen nope. to our episode about <laughs> yeah. it. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the week before Howling 2, we watch X-Men. Joey Blythe says, not a popular opinion, but I fully trust the Disney Marvel system. Before the writer's strike, they had four TV series and four movies planned every year for the next 10 years. That's 80 projects. When Iron Dang. Man first began in 2008, no one would have predicted how big Avengers Endgame would be. 11 years later, nope. everyone seems to discount the new direction before giving it a chance. The new big event still has a while to go before all these characters are thrown together. Yeah. yeah. I, it's not that I don't trust the system because clearly it worked yeah. for them. Mm-hmm. Like it was it's, wildly successful. It's, it's just, just, I'm tired of it. It's an oversaturation. It's an oversaturation. Right? It's like, too much we got, content. We got a lot in those first, in that first 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A absolutely. whole lot. I was, I was fully on board. Well, with and they had yeah. characters who had a history outside of movies. I mean, yeah. some of those characters have been around for like 50 to 70 years, yeah. right? You know, yeah. now it's your, well, you got people. Some of them longer because they're Norse gods. Yeah, well, well, that's very yeah. true. Yeah. But yeah, that that interest, like they again, they had us. I think they had everybody for those yeah, first ten years. We were hypnotized by that shit yeah. for a long time. Yeah, and it was the like, moment they had their moment. Yeah. They did. They really you finally did. got to see these characters and like. But we're human, the, and the we get tired up. of seeing the same shit. Yeah. So you know, especially you when the like. frequency increases so dramatically yeah. over such a short amount of time. Yeah. 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 Um, Michael Whitaker. So we talked about producer Avi Arad, who was the head of Marvel at the time, and he says it's weird because uh, Avi Arad would eventually go on to kill a few, a few friends franchises too it was his idea to sell off the rights to multiple studios which is why the mcu was so piecemeal for a while he was responsible for putting venom in the original spider-man franchise which is largely what killed it and i think he was behind sony's attempted spider-man adjacent universe that keeps falling on its face well i don't know if that's entirely correct avi arad it wasn't selling the rights to multiple studios he had the idea that marvel should make their they should become their own studio and I think Iron Man was the first one or the profits from that. They were able to form their own studio and then could sell the distribution rights to the mm-hmm. different, uh, you know, companies. So, like, that's why Universal has the Hulk and Good. Paramount. Oh, yeah. That's why we can't Iron make Man a regular and, Hulk movie. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. It's so And weird. then Disney just bought Marvel and was able mm-hmm. to collect them all. Disney was just like... Galactus, sucking yeah. up planets. They <laughs> own them all. Yeah. There's a Marvel reference. I was gonna for say you. we're talking about Zuckerberg. Disney, is yeah, the, yeah, the fucking virtual Christ. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Cyber yeah, Christ, <laughs> yeah, that's very true. They are our new technological overlords. 
Well, Which thank I look you. Forward to the- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, all of you, for writing in. We really appreciate it. We yes, hope you do so again. Uh, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Colin. Oh, man. What the Lawnmower Man. Of the Lawnmower Man. Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. The Lawnmower Man. What did you think? <laughs> I think it was the first time I saw it sober. <laughs> um, I saw it originally. And Colin's seen this a bunch. I saw yeah. it back. Yeah, well, I did because, uh, yep, it played. I saw it in the theater. And I saw it at the drive-in, and I worked at a movie theater, and so we got free admission mm-hmm. to the drive-in. I was there a lot. The <laughs> Lawnmower Man was often playing, yeah. and I didn't remember very much of it. <laughs> um, so, uh, this movie is so bad. I mean, it was just like <laughs> watching it tonight. The I'm like, okay, it, it was a big hit because it's written so um juvenile like everybody like you said kind of explains their motivations and everything is like right there on their sleeve Mm. um the computer graphics are horrible you know i mean that's i'm sitting there going like i mean they say like mainframe and then they're showing graphics and i'm like what the this is like abstract beyond belief like they have no idea you know what these concepts really are because they're so early and they're yeah. just kind of so there's and even when we talk about the plot, you know, like rarely do, does any of the stuff that happens in the computer simulation like actually have any bearing. It's just eye candy. Yes. Which I think was the reason to go see it. So the reason that it's interesting as like an artifact of, you know, human uh, cinematic art is because it's just looking back at, you know, this is yes. 1992 and like, what were the attitudes and what did they think? of <laughs> yeah, What did we think then? But this is a bad movie. I mean, if you take the computer stuff out of it, it's like, I did like what Pierce Brosnan was doing. He's committed. I, I like him as an actor. I thought Jeff Fahey was probably out of his depth and doesn't have the range to pull off some of the things that but he But still he was, committed. But still committed. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, Brett Leonard, you, you go like, I don't think there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 talent here <laughs> on display in this. He just got lucky that the the subject matter caught on and then he got hired to do basically the same thing a couple more times. Yep. Although I did kind of like, I got to go back and watch Hideaway because I do kind of re- remember I'm, liking that one until right. the end. And then I'm interested in that one. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going to I'm going to pass on on the lawnmower, man, because I lived it. And I don't, think, <laughs> I guess that's the thing. I don't know that there's, and that's why I'm kind of curious, you know, what you guys are saying. I don't think now there's any reason to go back really and watch, you know, aside from like, uh, uh, um, um, just a technological curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Holly, what did you think? Yeah, no, I think you, I think you summed it up pretty well. Um, I clearly, this was the first time I'd ever watched this. I had no idea this was what the movie was about. I thought it was going to be about a. a you wanted Killer Lawnmower. I wanted Killer Lawnmower. Okay. That's what I wanted. That's what. That's I what thought. that movie's called, right? Like, don't we have a Killer Lawnmower movie yeah. called Killer Lawnmower that yeah. people keep recommending? Serious? <laughs> Just it's, Killer Lawn. Oh, Killdozer. Killed, uh, was Kill it Killdozer Dozer or something? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I, I thought there was a Killer Lawnmower movie. It's uh, like Dom or somebody Blades keep raining or, it. No, not Blades. That's the roller skate movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's something. Maybe there, there's, there is. There's something. But that yes. I mean, that's there's what a I death bed, so you figure there's Killer Lawnmower. Huh? Yeah. There is a Killer Lawnmower, but I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, somebody um, will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, this is not what I expected at all. Um, and. Whoa. What the what, what the point of the movie is doesn't happen until much later. Like mm. there is a lot leading up to the final act of this movie and it's very long and it's very drawn out and it's dull. And yeah, like there's some there's some funny stuff at the end. You know, the the graphics are 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 comical comically bad and what happens is kind of crazy in that like fun way, but it's not it's not enough to really keep my attention. I was bored with most of this movie. Um, so like I said, I have no nostalgic attachment to it whatsoever because I'd never seen it. Um, I don't think it's what people expect. If they haven't seen it, it's not what you expect. Um, and if you have seen it, I don't think you've seen it in a long time. Oh, definitely. It's my guess. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to revisit or visit this movie. Um, maybe the the, ver- the curiosity of the graphics, but I you're not missing anything if you don't see it. Just look up some shit on the internet. I don't know. The <laughs> Mind's Eye videos. There you yeah, go. Mind's, Mind's Eye, Eye videos. videos. Yeah, go watch like <laughs> Go watch the music channel. For yeah, a yeah, while. yeah. 
Windows Media Player. Yeah, you've seen it. If mm-hmm. you've seen Windows Media Player, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to recommend it. There's not enough here for it to be enjoyable. Uh, no, I'm going to pass on Lawnmower <laughs> Man. Michaela, what'd you think? I oh man, I don't know, man. I'm I'm torn because I do like this like subgenre of like bad '90s fe- future tech movies that we've done. Like I like Johnny Mnemonic. I liked Virtuosity a lot, but like this is definitely my least favorite of those three if i'm kind of thinking of those um that is it's the whole and i do well, i want to make like a letterbox list now of like the bad 90s future because like would you count like hackers in this too right oh, like hackers. i you know See, there's i haven't, a, seen, I haven't there, seen hackers there's in so a lot long. of these types of movies yeah. and yeah. um the 90s this was what it was all about and none of them are particularly good unless you count like the matrix but that's like a big budget movie i'm talking yeah. about more like this level and this quality mm-hmm. you know um this whole Stephen King thing is fascinating, especially because of where he's at in his career. Like lots of weird things like that are happening. Like you have Sleepwalkers, which he wrote for screen, but was never a book. You know, lots of weird. He's trying out a lot of things. Yeah. But I do like because I I read a Stephen King quote once where he talked about like the definition of creativity is like looking at the same thing through a different lens, right? And so mm-hmm. his his kind of example of that was like if him and Elmore Leonard, who's like a famous Western author, both looked at like a pond, he would write a story about like some swamp monster that lives in the pond and terrorizes his town. Whereas Elmore Leonard would probably write about like a small Western town that has a drought and is like fighting over a water resource or something like that. Mm-hmm. But they're both looking at the same pond. Sure. Yeah. And so I, like I yeah. And so I do like that this movie is looking at the flowers for Algernon's story as evil instead of tragic. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's a level of tragedy to this, but everyone's so so much it's like who cares yeah, yeah. You, yeah know? you don't feel that tragedy at the end of no the movie. you no. feel it earlier maybe a little bit but yeah it, they don't really do enough to like there is a version of this movie out there that is really tragic right but it's not this one it's not the one <laughs> no. we got but i also do admire brett leonard's like i like that i can spot his movies now because they are so like they are just are what they are but this one yeah i, I uh i can't believe two and a half hour cut exists because i Ooh. feel like there was a lot in this that was extraneous and yeah. this i don't think i can recommend it just because like it, there is interesting stuff and like the bad CGI was very nostalgic almost like I can't I'm not mad at it because I know what to expect for that time mm-hmm. but it's not worth watching more for that when it's actually kind of good yeah 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 <laughs> right um, yeah. like this should be worse god damn right so I think I, <laughs> it's bad I think I'm gonna pass but it's it's a light it's pass a because pass. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna do a letterbox list of these movies because the ones I keep thinking of I do I like all like more than this one so I guess I'm rating it on that scale of of this subgenre this is my like least favorites yeah. but i don't hate this movie by any means yeah, yeah. I don't hate yeah. the movie yeah. but i think I'm gonna, it's a light pass sean yeah i think i have to pass on this as well um i think there is a curiosity about the movie especially uh, just based on you know um when it came out the technology we had available to make things like this to visually represent you know these ideas uh that were you know uh that we were really starting to like think about and expand upon uh, as far as technology and virtual reality and and graphics go, but I, I think that's it because, like you guys said, it, it's a drawn out movie in this hour and 47 minutes. Like you said, I can't believe a longer mm-hmm. cut of this exists because I wouldn't want to watch it uh, in any regard. It is, there's some interesting stuff in the movie. There's definitely not enough there for to be like, you should sit down for an hour and 50 minutes and watch this. Um, because again, just get high and go watch Windows Media Player. And I think yeah, they have the same the effect. Same yeah. Thing. Um, we might have more fun with that. I think so. Uh, and I think we kind of wrote sort of a better movie as we were watching the movie. Um, I don't know. Maybe if you get a bunch of friends together, you can watch it. But I don't think there's a lot. There's not too much there that's interesting enough to draw you into it. You, you, you kind of get in. It it's just, you know, it, it belabors the point like I'm doing right now. I'm going <laughs> to say no to the lawnmower, man. To Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. <laughs> the Lawnmower Man. I'm going to pass on that a curiosity yeah. to be sure not enough to say you should watch it so and that means uh, you are not obligated to watch this no yes. i don't think Ooh. anybody can watch this ever again yeah. i think that's yeah. the opposite of what yeah. it's illegal now like, sorry I, I missed, no, it, it you now, missed your it chance now disappears from the internet which well is it's ironic. not on streaming we couldn't find it right? so we had to go looking for this yeah. a little bit uh thank you vince <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your, no one will ever host. know what that means yeah, yeah. thank you for uh, your host yes all right well um 
I'm surprised the uh, Lawnmower Man 2 might be the better one, Sean. You don't I have, have to find a hard out time and- believing. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't, it, no, this did not howling me like it did. Yeah. Michaela. It's, yeah. I, you're, not, not, you're not under the spell. curiosity is not yeah. implanted in me to go figure out what they did Do in the next one. Do not need to scratch that itch. <laughs> no, no. Well, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. Allie. What are we going to watch next week? Well, I feel like we've been on a kick of like rewatching movies to see if they still hold up. Yeah. So I want to keep that going. Ooh, okay. We're going to stay in the 90s and oh, we're no. going to watch Backdraft. Ooh, All right. I haven't wow. seen that in a long time. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I watched this like three years Wait, ago. who do we say wrote? We just did a podcast and who wrote Backdraft? We're it was. We're going to talk about okay. Backdraft next week, Colin. <laughs> it just slipped my mind. We just did. Okay. It was mentioned at some point yeah. in passing. Because I talk about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Backdraft next Backdraft. week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.